Okay, uh, let's start. Uh, good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining. And uh, today, Humans Weekly Meeting to World Warsaw. We officially have uh, 30 days to <laughs> before our Congress in Warsaw. So in one month time, we will be physically together in Warsaw. Uh, and um, tonight, the meeting is going to be a bit shorter than usual. Uh, first of all, because I'm not sure if Marco Cappato can join us, um, as the Italians know very well, uh, on the 15th of February, there is the important uh, audition at the Constitutional Court in Italy, which will uh, uh, declare the admissibility of the two referendum uh, where the Italians collected the signatures over the summer, the one for uh, legalization of euthanasia and the one for the legalization of cannabis and it is of course an essential moment because uh, it's going to be the output of the participatory process that we triggered over the summer with the collection of signatures and the collection of signatures digitally uh, thanks to the initiative that was led by Lorenzo Mineo and Fundis and uh, of course the output of the decision of the constitutional court is going to also be very significant for our congress in Warsaw considering that two of the, of the key topics are exactly the uh, end, end of life decisions proposals at a European Union level with the project for the um, European Living Will and uh, the um, potential launch for the European Citizen Initiative on Cannabis Legalization, which would be a European uh, uh, initiative to remove the obstacles in the EU legislation that uh, can make easier for EU member states to change their legislation on this matter. And of course, the 15th of February is a very, very important uh, moment. So considering that Marco is not going to be with us tonight, um, I think it's good to use this meeting to have a very uh, short catch up on uh, on my side the la the last updates on the uh, congress in terms of participants and promotion activities but also uh, some of the ideas that we developed in terms of the special speakers that we want to have at the congress the attempts that we made and also discuss together if there are some uh, ideas that we can develop and then i think uh, everyone who is in the call can uh, on their side update on the activities that had been done uh, for the invites at the congress so that's the agenda very very simple and maybe we can also uh, have a bit of an exchange with lorenzo uh, on the matters that are related to the um, uh, European Citizen Assembly uh, and the European referendum as goals for humans for the democratization of the European Union and uh, the session during the Congress and the demonstration that we are trying to organize on the 13th of uh, uh, January. So I'll start very briefly and thanks Lorenzo for sharing also in the chat. Currently we have 46 uh, members uh on of humans and uh, on the registrations for the congress site we have uh, 35 registered participants only two of them for the online experience and so 33 uh, for the physical experience which uh, is one of the key goals uh, out of these four are polish two are austrians um, and the rest are Italians, of course. Um, and we collected the first 100 euros for fundraising dedicated to the Congress beyond the budget of humans and the contribution that Associazione Luca Coscioni will uh, provide for the uh, logistic of the Congress. I think the, um, the, the program is coming up quite nicely in the sense that we are starting to have some uh, confirmation for the rule of law and democracy panel uh, and uh, for the civil rights um, session in the afternoon of the first day. Uh, for the morning of Saturday, we had to switch the two sessions. So the first one at 9.30 will be the workshop on the right to science facilitated by Claudia Basta with a clear goal in involving the academic community in Warsaw. And I think also this type of panel is very important for the, um, 
for the um, sorry, Marco is joining uh, for the um, relationship with the academic world for humans. And then the session on cannabis tomorrow, Lorenzo and myself will have a meeting for the uh, creation of the citizens committee uh, for the launch of the European citizen initiative. Um, so maybe Lorenzo can say something about the session on democracy, which is the one that is maturing better. Uh, and then maybe I will ask uh, Marco if uh, just to give him a bit of background. Marco, we started saying that tonight is a very simple meeting, very much on the program, and also the fact that on the 15th of February, there is the Constitutional Court's decision on the referendum. And uh, uh, this, of course, is an important part of uh, what will happen from the 15 on also in terms of how we position the Congress uh, politically. Uh, so Lorenzo, maybe if you want to say something on the democracy uh, part of the program, yes. and then I see Tiala is connecting, she's working on the contacts on the self, sex and the reproductive health uh, issues, and, uh, and then let's have a brief round of table. Okay, thank you, Virginia. Um, so the session on uh, deliberative democracy, on participatory democracy in general, will be the first, the last one of the Congress. Um, and I think it's very uh, important because it will be a, a, not just a theoretical session, but the day after, on Sunday the 13th, we will have a demonstration asking for the institutionalization of a European citizen, uh, citizen assembly. And our request is just that the institution, the European institution su should uh, uh, apply what uh, the uh, recommendation of uh, um, the citizen panel on democracy from the conference on the future of Europe is asking for. Um, one of the points of this recommendation is asking for a European citizen assembly. So the, the main request of the demonstration on the 13th at the conclusion of Human Congress should be uh, the institutionalization of this European citizen assembly. We will have with us during the session on the 12th, the Saturday, um, Martin, Martin Gerwin, which is an expert, PhD expert in uh, participatory democracy and uh, sustainability. Um, he's from Poland, uh, so he, he was already one of the shapers of uh, uh, several uh, European citizen assembly in uh, Poland and not only. Uh, and so he will share with us some idea and inputs on uh, how these European citizen assemblies should be like. Uh, but most important, I think, uh, um, the day after we, uh, we should decide if uh, th this demonstration um, should be only in Warsaw. I think this should be the, the, main, um, the main place for the demonstration, uh, but also for those uh, were not coming in, in Warsaw uh, to see what they can do uh, to uh, go maybe in the street to demonstrate for a European citizen assembly. Also, and I say that uh, more for a brainstorming, um, we decided to left from the table um, to demonstrate not only for um, European Citizen Assembly, but also for uh, a European referendum, which is uh, another request issuing from uh, the recommendation on the panel of democracy. Uh, um, we decided to left this uh, also after a confrontation with uh, our partners from Citizens Take Over uh, Europe. They thought that it were better to prioritize the question of European Citizen Assembly. Um, but with this uh, scenario um, about the referendum, the Constitutional Court that will decide next week, I'm wondering if uh, the, um, the issue of a European referendum uh, will be more, uh, you know, um, more in line with uh, uh, the news uh, also of what will happen uh, 
in Italy and so could be something uh, more appealing also to demonstrate also for the European uh, referendum according to the way it is proposed from the recommendation. So this is something I think we should reconsider in the light of uh, the last uh, uh, news, um, in the light of what will, will, that will happen regarding the Constitutional Court also in Italy. Uh, apart from that, if there is anyone who has connection with uh, academic professor, it's better if it's a, a she um, that could uh, participate to this, uh, to this event, to this uh, session on participatory democracy. We, we made a lot of invitation. We invited also uh, David Van Reiburg, the superstar on uh, um, certition in Europe. Uh, we are waiting for the answer, but of course it would be great to have other um of of other experts attending the meeting so if you have any uh expert of deliberative democracy democracy you're in touch with uh don't hesitate to tell me and we will invite him or invite her and um and that's it um thank you lorenzo i think uh, what you mentioned about also the different approach to the demonstration uh, for more democratic rights and the connection with the decision of the constitutional court in general, it's uh, one of the key elements to accelerate the politicization of our Congress uh, and the level of uh, uh, fight. That we that we need to have, in my opinion. Um, I just want to add that uh, talking about fights, um, what we know that we are not uh, in the position to have a huge congress with millions of European citizens. But the approach that we are trying to have is on one side to have committed people who want to discuss. Uh, and agree in the methodology of what is humans is doing, but on the other side to try and get some inspiring uh, um, speakers uh, uh, that support this combination that we're trying to achieve between the instruments and the goals. We had invited the mayors of the city of Warsaw, Gdansk, uh, but unfortunately the second one didn't reply yet, and the first one is not available on that day. It would have been amazing to have the mayors of Warsaw, of course, at the Congress. Uh, so next move, uh, I've sent an invite to the mayor of Budapest, which politically could be even more symbolical to have the mayors of Budapest in the Congress in Warsaw, uh, and also to the um, leader the, of the democratic opposition in uh, Belarus, and again, as we have seen during the meeting uh, related to the migration emergency on the border between Poland and Belarus, and in general, the role of Belarus in the geopolitical landscape, she would be an amazing uh, guest for opening the, the Congress. Uh, okay, to not take too much time, I, and we are not a, a huge group, is there any political evaluation, but also updates on what? every single one is doing on uh, the um, uh, on the congress i'm very happy to have also katia garone who is the interviewer of uh, marco and sophie intveld in a very good podcast in english about the european living will so i also want to thank katia and arbury road who produced this uh, first uh, public statement on uh, the european living will uh, in english uh, and i see marco is connected so of course marco feel free to Day is about the um, constitutional court decision about the referendum in Italy. So I'm following and working, but not much to add. Okay. So um, raise your hands. Oh, Katia, ti sentiamo di qualcosa. Eh, sì, no, infatti, <laughs> sto cercando di alzare. Uh, Katia, we can hear you. So humans for the podcast for me it was a pleasure to me can you hear me uh, it was a pleasure for me to to interview marco and sophie interveld i uh, want to to ask if professor monticelli who was the one from unibo that uh, was fighting for patrick zaki would be a good speaker for the right to science what do you think 
Sorry, Katia, I have a problem with my phone, so I heard only Professor Unibot. Monticelli. Monticelli. Okay. She was the one who was fighting for Patrick Zaki. Ah, okay. And it, she's at Unibo. She's a professor at Unibo. She was the professor of Patrick Zaki. So while we were talking, I thought that, she, you know, she, she might be a good one to invite. To the okay. meeting uh, think about and let me know yeah just as a I, mean, I think the suggestion is great just to comment quickly also because of the transnational approaches beyond exactly. the union borders etc um, so the idea overall for the congress is to have as least Italians as possible, particularly if we pay ah, the okay. price, et cetera. But maybe it's, um, Claudia Basta is organizing the session for the right to science. So mm -hmm. maybe you can have a uh, chat with her and, uh, yes. um, and see if and how, maybe with a short video uh, comment or some, oh, of course, if the professor is up for coming to also because okay. activism push, that would be amazing. But maybe let's, uh, Try to conceive it with Claudia. Uh, okay. The focus on the on the right to science workshop. Uh, I think she's not in today, right? Uh, no, 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 no. She's not. Uh, and this okay. week she's a bit busy for some personal stuff that she's managing. But from next week she should be. Perfect. No, I I think I mean I can definitely help on that workshop. It's the one that is more. Uh, close to my to my background close. and uh, definitely we will organize also another podcast with Lorenzo for the participatory democracy so I will uh, uh, send him a separate email so we can try to organize an interview with him as well uh, and it would be great to do the same thing that we did it with Marco and Sophie Interveld so to have a second speaker because I think, you know, the, the trio was great. So that was uh, the, um, the main success of that interview because we had a parliamentary, an activist, and, you know, they, they, both of them had the different, uh, contribute with a different aspect to the, to the conversation. Um, okay. Yes, one question about the podcast, uh, just for everyone on the meeting. Basically, Katia, do you want to introduce Arbury Road uh, so we have a bit of a... Uh... Yeah, sure. So it's the kind of a think tank where, you know, people uh, discuss about different fields on economy and uh, um, health, digital, and it's progressive. Of course, it's a progressive uh, foundation, progressive Europe foundation. Uh, made basically by volunteer that want to, you know, discuss, inform the community uh, and try to make proposal, uh, European proposal to, 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 to change uh, on, this, uh, on this aspect. So we, we started this collaboration on specific topics. Uh, one of them was, uh, of course, the, the living will and of life treatment and uh, living will. Uh, and the idea is to open discussion also about the uh, global warming and the participatory democracy. Thank you, Katia. I shared also in the chat the link to the podcast. I use the Spotify link, but uh, it's on different platforms. And um, I think it's a very interesting document to be shared because uh, uh, Sophie Intfeld, which is a member of the European Parliament, uh, also got the whole idea of the portability of uh, civil rights, which is at the foundation of uh, the program of the Congress, the European Living Will proposal and the and the other proposals that we will discuss uh, during the Congress. So I think it's very good to have a content like this in English on the one of the pillars uh, of, the, of what we're trying to do in Warsaw and after Warsaw, of course. Okay. Um, any other update, comment, idea, evaluation, critique? I mean, I can share a um, quick update. Like I've been contacting some um, abortion rights activists. Um, Mirella Parakini, I think, uh, yeah, gave us a very interesting list of very interesting people on there. So I've emailed um, all of them at this point. Uh, still waiting on some answers, but a majority of the emails were sent yesterday. So I'm still quite hopeful 
Um, and then I'm looking for some other activists around trying to figure out who to contact next. So if you have ideas for uh, sexual reproductive rights, I'm very open to suggestions. Thank you, Tiala. Uh, I sent you as a private message the email address of Gabriela, the Polish activist based in Italy that was in our uh, meeting a few weeks ago. Uh, she registered to attend the Congress. So if you want to feel free to directly write her, maybe saying that you are working on this, because she mentioned during the meeting quite a few groups uh, in Germany, where recently the, there was an abrogation of a law that prevents to make information in Germany on abortion. It's been recently cancelled. So now <laughs> German women can be informed about their rights <laughs> to abortion. Uh, so Katia, uh, Tia, like, without me doing the connection, feel free to write to Gabriela saying that uh, uh, you got her contact from me. And uh, I mean, she's Polish, she's probably coming to also, and she is an activist for abortion both in Italy and uh, uh, connected to other places. So I think she's a good buddy uh, for you to, to, to work on this and thanks so much. Um, okay. Um, I see there is Andrea Andreoli and I don't know if you have something specifically uh, in mind and Miriam, started to work on the campaign, the fundraising campaign with the phone calls together with Angela. So oh, I don't know, Miriam, also if you want to say something about that. And then we, and, and Maria Pia, who is our woman in Warsaw and she's making a lot of things happen. So thanks Maria Pia for being uh, super helpful. Okay, can, can I speak in Italian? Yes. It's up to you. Yeah. OK, thank you. Um, so regarding the fundraising campaign with Angela and the help from Virginia, we are trying to come up with, a, with an idea. We are starting to call uh, different people. We have a list of members um, and people who donated money, people who were members in the past, and people who we think might be potential members to inform them uh, about the Congress. Our aim is for these people to become members and uh, for them to uh, to fund us in order for us to find uh, to fund our Congress. So we'll give them information about the Congress and we will inform them about the possibility of uh, donating. Uh, so far, we have this list of people we uh, will call, and we also uh, set up a small group of volunteers, activists that are going to help us. And so, yeah, we're ready to start. Thank you very much. And uh, I don't know what you think, but I think the script is quite a nice uh, FAQ on what humans is doing. Uh, so maybe we could also publish it on Human Sagora as a piece of content that anyone can refer to, to get in contact with other people that might be interested in you. I don't know what, what's your take, but I think the script can be transformed into something that can be used also beyond the phone call project. What do you think? Yes, I think it's a, a good idea. And uh, so I can um, uh, pass the script to Gabriel Luciano, maybe. Uh, so yeah. And uh, or we can put it on Agora yeah. as okay. an instrument for activists. Like, uh, these are the phone calls that we're doing. If you have anyone that you okay. want to talk about humans, it's a good basis for starting a conversation about humans with. Okay. Okay, I'll do it to this evening, so. And thanks for taking the lead on this, it's super, super precious. Okay, so we don't need to spend the night together. So uh, Marco is uh, rightfully busy on the deadline of the 15th of February. 
Um, so if there aren't any other questions, concerns, doubts, uh, we can call it a night. It, it was, hi, Andrea speaking. Vai, ciao Andrea. Uh, uh, ciao. No, io non ho capito. Tu hai, mi, hai, mi hai citato, io sono arrivato tardi. Perché Sorry, sono alla... I did not understand. I uh, arrived here a bit late because I was at work, so I'm not really, I don't know about what you talked about. Is there anything I should uh, debrief you on? Or... Say something about the meeting with the an unnamed person <laughs> uh, that we had last night on the European identity uh i can i can share some thoughts i i am uh, actually i'm on the go with my cell phone so i don't have any uh of my notes uh in front maybe so... let me just give a bit of background for everyone so that we know and then yeah. maybe you can say okay so for everyone uh, last night we had a meeting uh, here in brussels and remotely with andrea on uh, the european living will proposal but uh, we focused instead of the um, living will part, we focus on the European and uh, technological infrastructure that could be used uh, uh, for pushing for the European living will. So as you remember from the meeting that we had on the 13th of January, there were a few ideas. The first one that came out there was something similar to the Green Pass, the COVID safe test. Uh, but then Andrea identified the work that it's currently undergoing within the EU institution on the European digital identity, digital identity as a way to pursue. So last night we had an interesting meeting with an expert um, on this to try to see if this is a viable way to pursue. So maybe Andrea can help us just to be all of us on the same page on this. Uh, yes, just uh, uh, just as a forward, I uh, my job is actually working uh, within a, what is called the trusted service provider. There are those uh, companies, pri private companies that produce digital signatures and stuff like that. And uh, for this only reason, I have been in knowledge of the fact that in Brussels uh, they are working on a second version of the EIDAS uh, protocol. That is actually the European framework for uh, digital, uh, digital, let's say, digital everything, uh, digital identity uh, and, and, other, and other stuff. So I was aware of the fact that uh, there is some people, uh, I don't know how it works, how things work in, in Brussels, but there is a commission and uh, so several people that are working upon a, a framework for managing documents uh, uh, on a technological infrastructure. What, what does this mean? I, I will be very, very brief. Uh, having a, a technology, uh, something, an application, an app, uh, or uh, something uh, similar to actually um, put the uh, citizen, um, enable the citizen to share uh, credentials any kind of credential. When we had uh, this talk, uh, talking about uh, um, living will, uh, uh, I said, okay, this living will is actually a document, even if it's not uh, a, a driving license or, or a passport, is a, a kind of document. And it's probably uh, the right place to put, uh, uh, or maybe the, the right way to, to share within this framework is something that is interesting. As a matter of fact, what I do believe, and uh, uh, the people and, and the, the, I mean, the talk that we had yesterday uh, stressed upon, is that the um, sharing in a digital way documents have, as you probably uh, can understand, a uh, great problem uh, within uh, privacy and within the retention of uh, uh, of documents, of uh, attributes of documents and something like that. So we had this chat upon this problem and uh, upon how studying a framework 
can go in a pretty good way or can go in a very bad way for uh, uh, for the um, privacy right of the citizens. So uh, there is this uh, uh, open issue uh, that we hope that can go in the right direction, but we are not sure about it. And uh, upon this, uh, probably in the future, I don't know if a near future or not, we could we will be able to understand if it's a good idea or not to have it to have this uh, uh, information upon uh, a kind of uh, uh, digital uh, framework. Of course, we do sincerely hope that all this digital framework, if digital have to be, will be made on certain uh, with a certain, uh, uh, let's say, distributed and uh, cryptographically enabled uh, technology that assure that even a certain kind of information cannot be um, uh, 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 come si dice annullare, cannot be um, voided, voided. deleted by government uh, themselves. That's that's what the um, the the problem can be. Uh, if I am uh, a government and not very democratic, I could uh, use or uh, leverage uh, this uh, digital uh, thing to actually destroy the existence, the, the 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 digital existence of a citizen that I do not want to uh, bother with, and this is pretty. Uh, scary, of course. So we had this uh, interesting uh, chat, and of course, uh, uh, probably said uh, we we have to wait a little if uh, it goes, uh, and uh, and then uh, make a thought uh, within a, a few months, something like that. That's what I I, I got. Thank you, Andrea. And also just to give other elements that I caught from the meeting, uh, this re regulation is currently. Um, proposed by the European Commission and uh, the deadline for the amendments of this stage is the 27th, 26th of April. Uh, apparently this informant told us that there are two ways for this regulation. One is politically driven by the French presidency of the European Council, uh, which would have the goal of course, very political to deliver these uh, uh, before June, so before the end of the presidency of Macron as well. Uh, but according to our informant, this would mean a very rushed uh, regulation on the digital identity. Then there will be an intermediate presidency that I don't remember the next. And then the next next is the Swedish one. So in his opinion, uh, the ideal scenario will be that this gets slowed down enough uh, to take some time to work on the issue that Andrea described. From a European Parliament perspective, the um, commission that is more active on this regulation is the LIBE committee, which is the one uh, on freedoms and rights, basically, uh, which is very much focused on the self-sovereignty um, self and the identity and the protection of the, of the data of the users. So it's both an issue of fundamental rights and digital transition somehow. Um, and just to give the kind of milestones within the EU institution on the digital identity uh, bit, which would be potentially the infrastructure for the European living way. Um, it's that kind of technical, but I think it was worth to have this uh, since it's part of what we're gonna discuss also in Warsaw and we're trying to create the network with the right to die organizations across Europe upon this. So it's good to have this up uh, I, I just add one thing that the, uh, uh, all that you said is, uh, is uh, correct. The term is, is uh, exactly, it's pretty hard to, to pronounce for an Italian, is self-sovereign identity. So an identity Thanks, that is sovereign by uh, the, the and I, I would say, that it is a good idea for uh, everybody is listening now, having maybe a, a search on Google or, or some other, um, some other um, engine or having uh, uh, taking a look to some videos uh, that you can find uh, uh, here and, and there.
trying to explain this, uh, this paradigm because it's actually pretty interesting. Beyond the fact that uh, it is uh, uh, working the right way, beyond the fact that will be implemented correctly or not, to what what were, what is going to to um, to happen in Europe, but it's a key word that should be. Uh, I mean, it uh, it's worth uh, uh, taking a look to some uh, to some information upon this word. Thank you, thank you, Andrea. Uh, let's uh, educate ourselves on our own digital rights. Um, I guess, to be honest, I don't know if Lorenzo wants to bring this to Mario Staderini for the project on the platform for using our political rights uh, in, uh, like, as we have done in Italy with the signing for referendum. But I don't know if this whole European digital identity it's technologically speaking part of the discussion around uh, voting, signing, like, I don't know if it's a part that is also important for the technological solutions around the... Uh, yeah, I would love to have something uh, uh, shared by Andrea, so if I have a document, I can... Yeah, we, we, have a, we have the briefing notes that we used yesterday for the meeting uh, on the regulation in the European Parliament. I think at this stage, we just need to understand if this European digital identity thing would be relevant also for something like technologies for um, democracy, basically, <laughs> uh, because uh, it's an identity that a citizen will use then for all his online activities. So somehow it ties to the Colao project. <laughs> basically. Okay. Uh, I don't see any other hands raised. Huh? So I think we can call off the meeting. We will do our best to call for next week for the meeting on the statute. Uh, but uh, I'd say let's have a chat maybe with Marco and the others to see in relation with the constitutional court and everything like how we want to approach next week meeting, if we want to go on the statute or if we want to something more on the political side of the Congress. Uh, so we'll, uh, we, you will receive the invitation on Monday next week. Monday, Tuesday. Okay, thanks everyone. And uh, keep sharing the Congress with your contact and also with not your contacts, but people that you think might be uh, good participants. Thanks everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Ciao.